The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this uh, 30th day of January. <clears throat> One more day, we wrap up the month. Look at this candle here. This is a candle of Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft to us was a, a bellwether. It was a, uh, we've been along the, the Dow Diamonds and the UDOW forever. I mean, 2020 was, uh, we're still long that position in the diamonds. We're still long that position in the, from March low of 2020 and the October low of 2022. Uh, still long the UDRW, this is three times long, you should never do it, but we've done it. So, so, so far, so far it's been successful uh, since then, because that's just really a trading vehicle. But in the last move down to the October low, this October, this past October, um, what what we did was we bought Microsoft as really kind of a, a, an embracing Dow, S&P, uh, QQQ, XLK, that's the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, and to embrace all those because and AI, the AI, ARQ, it has, it's there. So And we embraced Microsoft, and Microsoft has gone from a low, just the most recent low, this is December low in the 360s, it was actually 367.90, to where it is right now, 410, it hit 413. And earnings come out today, it's just so timely that all of this is happening right now. There are a couple of things that could happen. One is, I think almost everything that uh, Microsoft could ask for has been written into the stock, into the price. I would love it. And sometimes people say, be careful what you wish for. But no, I would like at least one area just was enough to disappoint that all the other positives allowed it to pull back sharply. I'd love for it to come back. It's at 4.10, hit 4.13.05. Looking for a round number here. We'll see when that happens. I would love for it to not on very bad news, just on one aspect that just says, whoops, not 100% not perfect. Well, let's put it this way, not 120% perfect, which is most of what most of these companies are asking for. And a pullback that says it needs time and price just to kind of deal with that, both, both emotionally, physically, that means a physical price, and um, allow us to, we've taken a little bit off, allow us to get back into our um, add on to our core position from down in the 330s. And why do I say that? Why do I want to take some time now to talk about it? Because today you get Google. I'm going to Google. I'm not going to Google. Al. I, I know take Google G-O-O-G, -O -O the C stock. Um, at some point, I'm sure we will get into Google. But we always miss it somehow or other. It's not on my list. It's a great company. In fact, I, I would suspect that in terms of potential, using AI and all these other things, this is the one that we need to monitor as closely as possible um, because somehow they always have a little bit of a deb debilitative moment and then they correct everything and they come right back, roaring back. So it's trading now. Uh, let's go to leg D in the daily chart. It was 155.20 yesterday. Today it's slightly lower at 155.04. Days young, we've barely begun. Um, leg C in the weekly charts, almost all these weekly charts look fabulous. They all look as if we're going higher in 2024. And the monthly charts, leg D is still looking very good. So what we, I need to do right now is to, to say, I'm anticipating that as we come into this first part of February, we're going to see some kind of it could be a rotational, and let's just do this. Uh, let me do this right now. So the Dow at this particular point is down seven. Keeps coming back from a little bit of a pullback. I have alternate counts here in the waveform. All I can say is that the technicals are still very strong. The nine period moving average finally today, and I was talking about this for a little while, saying the histogram is starting to improve. There's a chance that the MACD could actually flip positive before there's some kind of a pullback. That's exactly what we've got. 
The stochastics at 91%. I mean, that is fabulous. On balance, volume is a bit overbought. And I'm looking at this and saying, there's a chance that we come back and we consolidate into the low 37,000s. At least that's initially what I would look for. But leg A, this is unbelievable. This is, look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This is the 14th consecutive week of higher highs since the low that was made in the 32,000s back in October was at 27th. It's a weekly chart. And it's only a leg C in the, in the monthly and in a buy mode. You should expect at least a peak D, four higher peaks before you've got to say, all right, let's, be, let's watch what happens next. Your obligation in the Chapman Wave is to get you to a D, and we're at a C. So we've still got to pull back a whole month of no new higher high, even by one penny. And that gives you peak C, and then a whole month going up for leg D. And then if you turn down at that point, another whole month. So that just takes us into... Uh, March, eight Texas to April. All right, that's the worst case scenario. All right, let's just get back to this story here. SPX is trading up, uh, sorry, down 2.52, made a new recovery high today. Let me get rid of this. That's not accurate. I forgot to change it from the other day. Just a couple of days and you can be 100 points off. It's amazing. All right, so what we're looking at here, leg C, I, I really can't give it any other count at this particular point. And that just says we still have to make a peak C. Well, if today we don't go one penny above, well, we've already gone above yesterday's half, 49, 29, 31. We've gone to 49, 29, 52. This extends leg C. That's, that's the way the waveform works. And it's a leg B in the, in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly. So that says, let's just imagine for whatever reason, there's a pullback tomorrow, no new high. That gives you a peak C. That means the first week of February, which will be starting Thursday, we could have a leg D. So that means early next week could be the earliest we get to a D uh, for um, some kind of a consolidation. Look at the QQQ. That's already at a D, and it's going sideways, consolidating. Of course, if Microsoft and Google... They might be mixed. Well, I, I, my, I don't know why my gut feeling says that Microsoft is a little toppy here and that it's just gone, it's overextended and it should pull back. Um, and on the one hand, I'd say, I'd love for it to pull back. Subscribers are saying, what are you talking about? <laughs> we, we want this to skyrocket to the moon. No, you don't want moonshots right now. You want cons you want to breathe. It's like a long, it's like a relay. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta stop for that little, uh, to accommodate some kind of rest period. That's what you want. But it's a leg C in the weekly chart of the QQQ. One penny above 429.25 continues this leg C. And it's only a leg B in the monthly, monthly chart. Uh, looking at the IWM, I maybe it's come back a little bit right now. IWM is 197.17. Yes, it has. It's uh, now only down a dollar seventy. It is in a, a gray leg B. I'm calling it gray because it's stochastic. Oh, I can finally call it a blue. The stochastic's at 81%. The MACD are finally cross positive. The 9 is over the 40. It's a struggle. Remember the dreaded H pattern? Can fail at a peak A or a B. That's where it usually does. So I'm watching this closely because if by Friday the uh, IWM is trading under 194, that's going to say, whoops, stalling motion. But at 201, it's very good. I'll be right back. Now it's down 38. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Right, so just to demonstrate a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology, like here's a peak D, yes, a five-minute chart of the E-mini. It went under the 200 pre-moving average and was acting as support. Oh, I needed to just show you this. Uh, for those of you who trade the futures, I, I talk about this all the time. The evening session from the close of the previous day, you can see all the way. This is actually 16 hours where the trading range was no more than 10 points. I, after an evening that can travel 20 points in an eye blink or 40 points, that's amazing. So look here, we've got from the low bar, you've got peak A, and then this is the starting point right here. So every get peak gets uh, notated. So that's also an A. That's also an A. But then just above it starts a B. That B is underneath that A, but that gets priority. Then it goes to C. D pulls back sharply, tests the 200 period moving average. Now it's trying to move away from it. 49.46 uh, is that moving average. So... Um, and now I want to just show you this chart. I'm going to go back to what I was talking about a moment ago. Look at this. Makes a peak E at uh, 3 o'clock yesterday and then stalls. And within that, look how long it stayed in that trading band. And then I have a whole bunch of rules that I talk about for a narrow trading band, all the prerequisites, the requirements that you look for, what can, what, what can happen. And it fulfilled almost all of those and look, it's gone right back in to the trading band. Isn't that amazing? So anyway, it's a technique, and I do a lot of that with these different techniques that you can use in your different trading positions. Now, what I want you to say is IWM is stalling a bit here. If you look at that in, in uh, together with the, um, let me just find it, the RSP. So yes, a lagging in a lagging index, iShares Russell 2000. 
this was a lagging index. It still is in many ways, but not that lagging. This is the S&P 500 equal weight. Let me just change the spelling over there. I don't have to spell it incorrectly. Simple enough. Get rid of that A right there. Yeah. <laughs> equal weight, S&P equal weight ETF, trading at uh, 157.97, down 49 cents. Um, the high that was made right here with this tiny little doji candle, so you've got 158.60, 158.53. It's a Chapman with two bar reversal at a peak G. Pulls back, and you've got a high of 158.52 yesterday. So this is interesting because you've got your cup formation. You've got the nine period moving average. It's good, not great, but it's good. The MACD hasn't turned positive. The stochastic's very good at 89%. On balance forms are tad overbought. And here it is, kind of struggling in this. Uh, I'm going to put this in here, make it a little different, change the color. Now, first of all, new parallel, then I'll change the color. Make that green, make that red or pink. I like pink because it's just more distinguished in terms of all the red candles. And here we are in the weekly chart, Chapman Wave inside track, repellent zone, holding OK. It made a peak C. This could become an overlapping peak C. It says it should definitely go to a D as it stands here. It should still go to a D. But 164.49 was the high in January of 2022. We're just an eye blink away, seven points. But isn't it interesting that it's taken all this time? It's actually, when you look at it from here to there, I want to, let me just do a fib retracement. What I want you to say is, considering for retracements, that's actually pretty darn good. Uh, when you think of the overall two years of consolidating, and it went just underneath the 60, what is it right there? Yeah, so it has, okay, let me move this so I can get it exact. Yeah, 61% uh, retracement goes under it a little bit and bounces up. This is just more time than price. It is price, but it's more time. So what I'm looking at here is that there's a slow improvement in the equal weight ETF. The SPY has a different picture. Look at that. SPY is in already in a leg D at an all-time high. So within that context, what I am looking at is... The weekly chart is still very strong. I think if we come in for a little bit of a consolidation, uh, let's say 49 to 47, so 49 is nothing. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not even sure the percentage yet because it really depends on um, how the initial impact to the downside is, how speedy it is, how what kind of momentum and how the MACD expands as it as the as the price pulls back as well as how the nine period moving average flips to negative and to get it negative, it does the daily negative, you'd have to see the S&P, that's the SPY, probably trade under 742, uh, did I, say seven, I mean 47, 472, that's what I meant, 472, eh, probably 475, under 475. And then we were here at 490, that's, you know, that's quite a bit of a pullback. All right. So within that context, I'm done with all that. I did want to just go through the TLT. The TLT is having a little bit of a pullback. It's given back some of the gains. That 200 period moving average of 96.36 is a magnet. It should try to get there, but if it doesn't, then watch out for the low that was made at 93.10 a couple of uh, days ago. And it's up four, four ticks right now, 94.91. The weekly chart is it's really kind of struggling. It's not going anywhere. Uh, I want you to look at gold now. Uh, gold has given back almost all the gain. It's up 4.8 at 2,049. I just don't think it's going anywhere just yet. I think we're building to something, and it's going to be a geopolitical situation more than economic. It might be a combination, but I do think the geopolitical aspect will be involved. Not just yet. SI gave back its gains early morning. It's down 16 cents. The silver at 23.08. High-grade copper. Um, Holding okay, it's up 0.03 at 3.881. Holding quite nicely, but uh, the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart is like a magnet. It's going to try to keep the, the, the high grade copper contained there. What am I missing? Crude oil. I also want you to do this. I hope I've got, yeah, 
Crude oil is up seven cents, right on the 200 period moving average after making a leg D. I think it's going to be a peak D today. I want you to look at HO, which is heating oil. <clears throat> Uh, peak A, B, C, D. It's at a peak D right now. Leg D, it'll be a peak D. There's no new high today. Um, this is a pretty big move. If you're looking at the weekly chart, you can see that it is holding within this containment area between just under two and just over three. It's just right in the middle there right now. It's at 2.75. I don't know if I should do this right now because, uh, yeah, the wheat is up a tad at two and a quarter, but it's in a down channel. Soybeans. Uh, making a lower low, it's actually turned around from the low today, but it has made lower lows and lower highs, not very good. Uh, corn, same thing, it turned around today, so maybe the DBA, which is what we have, 21.44.09 DBA is the uh, DBA Agricultural Fund, um, holding quite nicely. Uh, let's just go to, uh, I wanted to go to um, live cattle, because I was asked about that, live cattle. Yeah, live cattle is making a new recovery high. A leg F, very nice action. Weekly charts improve, leg B. And we've got the monthly chart says, mm, it's a good retracement, but you want to see it get way over the 50% mark to the 185 area, and it's at 180.47 right now. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 74, S&P's down 6. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Hi, folks. Let's just go through a couple of things that I was asked about. So, um, let's just do Apple first. Apple. Apple is trading down uh, almost two at 189.92. It looks like it's just kind of stuck here. It's not bad. It's just not good. It's just stuck. Not. It's holding very well, but it's stuck. Uh, if it closes under 185 in the next week, that's a real problem. We'll go to 179 at 200 period moving average. If it can get to 197.60, maybe it'll test the 199.62 high that was made in uh, December. Um, Amazon, and Amazon comes out with earnings tomorrow, I believe. Uh, no, Thursday. Uh, Amazon is trading at 161.73 was the high. And uh, it's trading 160.82 right now. Let me just get rid of all these notations. Yeah, it did have two, two exact highs, and then it broke to the upside. A little doji candle here. Yeah. See, everything about this on balance volume is the one thing that says just be real careful right here. The nine is over the 14. The price is over the 14. The MACD is good. The Kazakh fabric is at 92.91. It's going to be, it can't be one. It has to be at least this week, at least two of the Magnificent Seven has to come out and disappoint the market for the market to really pull back. And it has to be a disappointment that says, oh, oh, this could affect a lot of areas, AI and everything else. And we haven't got that yet. So when we get it, we'll see what happens. So one, 157 to 156 is a very near-term support for Amazon. And it's in a leg D, a little bit further ahead than the others in the weekly chart, and only a leg C in the monthly chart. All-time I was in the 188 area, and 81 was the low. And uh, here we are at uh, 161. Uh, that's really a, a very impressive very impressive move to the upside. Um, and now what we're looking at is, uh, let's see, alphabetically, I don't know if I can do it alphabetically because I never remember that. Let's just go to Netflix. Netflix trading uh, had a huge gap. And for four sessions, that gap hasn't even been uh, under 500. We're way at the 566 level. I am calling this a leg E at this particular point. Doesn't matter about gaps, you just keep counting the waveform. And I am calling it a D in the oh, in the weekly, and we haven't gone above the previous high. And the previous high was 579.64. Let's just see if there are any round numbers there. No, no round numbers. All right. Um, and it's a leg D in the weekly and a leg D in the monthly chart. So all of these are saying outstanding action, holding the gains. But visually, even, it looks a little bit overboard. Let's go to, I did Goog, right? Let's just do it again just to make sure that I did it. Yeah, Goog, I did earlier on. This is um, trading at 154.49. And it is in leg D in the daily, leg C in the weekly, and leg D in the monthly. Remember, we was only looking for Ds at least. Now, what are we looking at here? I'm missing Meta. I always forget Meta because they changed their name from Facebook. Leg D. Very strong move, very powerful move. And uh, <clears throat> D daily, E weekly, and all-time high leg B. As we're speaking, all-time high leg B. Only a leg B in the monthly. That's really bullish. So matter, same thing. So as I say, all of these, I mean, this is what you want to see, really strong, powerful action. But then you want to say, where would we get an overboard situation? Well, I'm always looking at Ds. Uh, let's just see. So I, I'll show you this right now because we, we're on the line just on a very short-term basis as a trading position. We do have a short in the Dow uh, from yesterday, and yesterday was an all-time high. So far today is the 29th, th uh, sorry, the 30th, and it fractionally took out the 38,343 high. No, it hasn't. No, it should have. Had. It doesn't. It looks like it should have. 393, 160. Yeah, it hasn't taken out yesterday's high yet. So we're going to be watching this very closely, and it's a peak D in the 120-minute in the chart. Am I skipping something here? Um, oh, Microsoft. Microsoft. I thought I did Microsoft. Microsoft trading um, uh, up 96 cents at 410.70. Earnings come out today. So earnings come out today. 
Google's earnings come out today. Everyone's microvices uh, earnings come out today, and it hasn't taken out the high of four days ago, which was an all-time high. Only a leg B in the week, in the weekly, leg D in the monthly. So we're looking at the high of 184.92. I'm just looking around to see if there are any round numbers. There's always a clue to me to say, okay, monitor this carefully. Mm -hmm. So far, no round numbers. And earnings come out. But see, there's a difference between advanced micro devices and Microsoft. Earnings coming in and Google. See, advanced Microsoft is in the area of the semiconductors. And there are billions that are going towards the semiconductor industry. We've known that for a long time. I'm sure a lot of it has already come out, but it's it's there. And what happens very often is there's this like a funnel. The money's all there, but the funnel can only take so much money at a time in a functional way. And that's what I think we're looking at. I think that we're very close to the semiconductors having some digestive phase. And then another big one to the upside. And it is only a leg C in the monthly, but it's a leg D in the weekly chart. We only begun the week, so it's nothing much we can talk about here. So it's not what happens overnight in any of these. Uh, uh, so did GM, GM usually comes out during the day. Did GM come out? Well, oh, it certainly came out. It's at 37.57, up 2.18, right on the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart in leg C. Look, here it is. A, B, uppercase on the way up, leg C. It failed at a peak B before, right at the 200 period moving average. What's going to happen next? Now, it's interesting because the order companies, I am, I'm, I'm getting ads all the time about sales. I think the, the order company, the dealers are already worrying a lot. And I think they're worrying a lot about the. Um, <clears throat> They're worrying a lot about the electric vehicles. And I think they have good reason to, because with the winter coming up and just unfolding and a lot of people are finding out from the very cold weather, some of their cars are having difficulty charging or starting. It's not a panacea. I mean, I would love an electric vehicle because I, I like to kind of put your foot on the accelerator and it just zips along. You know, when you're putting the foot on gas, you got to put your foot down, and then there's a whole mechanism that goes on, you know, spark plugs, charging, all, all the stuff, until finally whew, it takes off. Electric, whatever you, if you put X amount of pressure down the accelerator, it'll give you X amount of power. Uh, kind of fun. So, but in the meantime, back at the ranch, there are many other things that say that you, people are already paying a lot of money for these EVs. And I don't think everybody's happy about the economic aspect of it, but they might love their cars. So within that context, I just wanted to go to, um, so I think I've done all of those. I might be missing one. Yeah, so what I wanted to say is that Microsoft, as opposed to advanced micro devices, advanced micro has that back, this potential backlog, right? Microsoft has already done all that it has to do in this particular phase. I'm watching the same with Google. I'm watching it very closely. A BA will be tomorrow. Oh, man, BA. I don't know what they can say. A very poor administration there. Not good. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, let me just get to this right away. So Boeing makes this uh, dreaded H pattern took out the left side low three to four days ago. Try to bounce is not acting very well. So let's just go not with what I'm anticipating, but what I'm looking at. If Boeing, so it comes out tomorrow, that's a Wednesday. If on Thursday, Boeing is trading under 192, it's a 200 right now. That is not a good sign at all for Boeing. If for whatever reason, I, who knows what the reason is. If it's trading from 200 right now and it hits in the next four sessions, it touches 230 in the 200-period exponential moving average, that's going to be impressive action. I, I just – there's something terribly wrong with uh, Boeing and we know what it is. I mean, if they're not able to keep everything in check like they should. It just makes it really upsetting. The next question came in. Could I look at where did it go? Um, right here. Oh, XLF, 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 yes. Now, I've got this as a leg F. Actually, the way it looks, it's more like it's a brand new leg B. So I'm going to put this in as an alternate count. Nothing to do. It's still looking very strong. We're talking about this for a couple of days now, saying that the move for that nine-period moving average never went negative. It's still green. That's still positive. The stochastic's at 96%. Then a question came in, can we look at Bo uh, uh, BA Bank of America? So that's a B right there. So XLF is very good. If this week it's able to tag, it's at 38.95 right now. If it's able to tag 39.60, hopefully 30, 40, if it can tag 40, wow, that'll be impressive because the uh, high, high in January of 2022, look, that doesn't this look very much like the, um, I have to always look it up because I forget, the RSP that was the um, S&P, uh, right, equal weighted. Yeah, it does. So this is uh, this would be say financials. I want the financials to moving up. In fact, any digestive phase we have right now, I would love if the financials actually hold very well. So the question was Bank of America, and I mentioned the other day to, that uh, to start if it, people was wanting to know when to either add or to start another. We are long uh, add to this. And I said it's looking much better. The nine period moving average is just about across positive. This is a good opportunity with a very a fairly tight stop. Now here it is up 2.4 percent. It's up 81 cents at 34.42. That's really nice action. And it goes to a leg D at 34.70. 
and it's at 34.43 in the weekly chart. That's really good. And the monthly chart, monthly chart I'd said before, starting to improve a lot. Yes, is uh, the 120 minute chart says getting a tad overbought, but that doesn't mean to say it can't remain overbought. Meantime, it's got tremendous support in the 30, it's at 34.44 in the th whole 33s, all of 33. That could be a containment area if it does pull back. Yes, and that question, well, what was that in the Dan? Uh, Basil, could you look at? Hi, Basil. Uh, could you please check AIQ? AIQ. AIQ is the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF. Made a peak D the other day, pulling back just a little bit. And this is what I've been complaining about. Weekly chart leg C, monthly chart leg C, all time high was 33.45. And all this time, with all this talk about IA, II, AI, IA, EI, all these things that pertain to the new era, this thing has really not done well. I, I should mention we are long, but I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with the fact that it is, um, that it isn't pushing into the, I, not even the 33s. I, it should be in the 36s right now, at least. So something's not quite right with this. It's doing okay. Like, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's not as impressive as it should be based on all the um, information we've got. Now, what is important is that if it pulls back in the first week of February, in the first full week of February, that's next week, that 31 to 30.50 area needs to be a containment area. If it goes below that, it says, uh-oh, it's going to stall, and it's going to probably stall for a little longer and probably pull a little bit deeper. So, yes, it's doing quite nicely right now. Mm, question is SLB, that's slob, slumberger, oil service, slumberger, uh, peak D in the monthly chart, peak F, huge pullback from the 60, just under 62, peak F in the weekly chart, comes all the way down to 48. It does look like the, oh, it does look like the 45, 200 period moving average it looks wants to be um, tested. So let's see. And the weekly chart made a dreaded H pattern, held, ran up, didn't take out the left side high, but it stalls at the 200 period moving average, and now it's gapped down. Is this an earnings report? 48.08, just yesterday it was at 52. Yeah, if it is, this just says to me, and this is the thing I've been worrying about. I've been looking... For weeks, I've been looking at these uh, rig and all of them. Rig, uh, let's just see. Yeah, I've been looking at all of them, and they are not impressive. Uh, MRO, what's MRO? We used to have that once upon a time. Marathon oil, yep, marathon oil. Um, much better looking in a monthly chart, but really, it's not doing very well. Yesterday, it's up six cents. So something's not quite right, but I'm going to say to you this. This is based on earnings. If Slumberger is able, SLB trading down 5 at 48.08, if it's able by Thursday to Friday of next week, in other words, a, over a week, given almost seven sessions, training sessions, if it's able not to slide into the 46s, but instead, today's high is 49.57, if it's able to get to 50.35, and then 50 point, yeah, 50.82 is the 200 period, no, is, is the uh, nine period exponential moving average. If it's able just to tag that, that says, you know what, that was just old bad news. Now I'm looking at new bad news. And therefore, let's just go, you didn't ask me about it, but I'm going to go to it. Let's just go to RIG. This is uh, RIG is Trans Ocean Limited Offshore Drilling. Well, they're, they're not exactly in the same areas, but they kind of go together. Uh, this is a little different. Um, this is starting to look a little bit more, I wouldn't say impressive, but it's looking a little bit better that it wants to tag the 200 period moving average right there in the weekly chart. It's trading at 568. Now, you didn't ask me that. I'm just trying to put the package together. 589. If, if, if Rig is able to push into the, I mean, it's not good enough. If, if it can tag $6 by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, I'd be impressed with this. I'd be impressed and say, good. And I'd have to put marathon oil, also not quite in the same category, but more in the same sector. Um, also, it looks very much like rig, having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight or nine candles with only one peak, little tiny peak, tiny candles, 
but it is trying to say, hey, don't forget about me. I've got a little bit of strength here. So at 23, 29, if it's able to get you 20, it needs 24, 18. It needs to be about almost a point higher. If it's able to do that without instead in the next three sessions hitting 22, 63, that'll be a good sign. So I, I'm looking at this. Uh, Basel, Saudi Arabia, cancelled big project. Oh, SLB was involved. That's Thank you, Dan. So that, that's the reason why I was saying just a moment ago that if it's just a one-time thing from the old earnings or, the, or some kind of report like that, if, it, if SLB... Oh, so the question is, is this a buying opportunity? Ooh, that's a good question. I'll be back. I'll try to do that during the break. And also, did you get a question? Okay, Dan, what is the question? Can you? Yes, I just posted SLB. Okay, yeah. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. 
for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, in this very short uh, final section, uh, let me just say, um, in this segment, I'd like to just say that Bitcoin is balancing. I, if Bitcoin at 43,785 cannot hold 43,300 support, and takes that out, you gotta watch that really closely. Right now it's holding quite nicely, not all of them doing the same thing. This SLB, I had a bunch of people, it turns out that quite a few people either have it or were looking to buy it. So I don't know what percentage the, the Saudi contract was for. It could have been really big. That, that means that it's gonna take time to repair or to rebuild to get that back to garner more business. But as a just a one-time thing and a pullback like this, I don't think I'm going to change anything that I was saying before. If it takes out uh, in the next few days, if it takes out the low of 47.17 on the 17th, that's really not, not good action at all. What I would do is I would definitely take a little bit of money off right now and just say that's money I know I've got in my hand. And if it rallies and it starts to generate, you can always add that back. I don't want to be vulnerable to a slight of 45. Um, and then see it go even lower. So slumber, I'll do a little more work for tomorrow, but right now it's a little tough to call as a 